the problem of evil is an objection to Christianity. And the idea is that if God is all good and God is all powerful, there wouldn't be as much evil in the world, as much suffering, misfortune, disease, natural disasters, and so on. Now, I think there are good philosophical responses to that, and I give that in my book, Christian Apologetics. The main focus I, I have, though, is we have strong arguments from philosophy and science that there is a creator and a designer. And then we have the arguments from the historical record that God has come to us in the person of Christ to live for us and to die for us and rise again from the dead. If that's true, and it is true, and there's good reason to believe it, then we should have hope that evil will not overcome good because if Christ's death had meaning to atone for our sin, set us right with God, and if he rose from the dead as a sign of victory over death and sin and Satan, then we have a rational hope to get through life. That's a very, very short response to the problem of evil. But on the other side of it, Christianity doesn't simply give us a list of true statements. It does, but it gives us wisdom on how to live and how to live through suffering. We have a, a book in the Bible called the Book of Lamentations, where the prophet Jeremiah is calling out to God in his sorrow and in his confusion. We have 60 Psalms of the 150 Psalms that are called Psalms of Lament, where the psalmist uh, cries out to God, is sometimes uh, confused, sometimes angry, always sad, but the psalmists are engaging God. So in my own situation, my first wife, Rebecca Merrill Grotheis, was a writer and an editor, a very brilliant woman, and she contracted a rare form of dementia and eventually died from that five years ago. So we had to really live through some inexplicable suffering because I couldn't tell you and Rebecca couldn't tell you why this was happening, but we didn't take it to be meaningless and we didn't take it to be decisive evidence against the truth of Christianity because we had been well steeped and well trained in apologetics. And also we had these beautiful Psalms of lament. We could pray like Psalm 22, 39, 88, 90. There are so many of them. So because Christ came and lived a righteous life before God and man and died for us and rose from the dead, we know that evil doesn't have the last word Resurrection has the last word, and we also know that suffering has meaning. We know from Scripture that through suffering we can develop character, we can develop empathy. But even when we don't know how our suffering is contributing to a greater good that wouldn't have happened otherwise, we can have the knowledge that it is not meaningless. And I'll just make one distinction before I let you translate and that is the difference between inexplicable suffering and meaningless suffering. Meaningless suffering means there's no explanation possible and it serves no greater good. Inexplicable suffering simply means I can't explain why it's happening, why my brilliant wife has dementia, but I trust that there is an explanation in the mind of God, in the plan of God. And I don't say that as a leap of faith. I say that on the basis of all the evidence for God's existence, all the evidence for the reliability of the Bible, and also through my own Christian experience. So Christians don't have to try to explain specific evils. That is, why did God bring this specific evil into my life? But we can walk through it knowing that Christ went to the cross on our behalf, 
that his suffering had meaning to atone for sin and be our greatest example. And then also that the suffering and death is not the final word. The final word is the resurrection of Jesus and ultimately the resurrection of all his followers. So I used to encourage my wife, Rebecca, by reading passages from 1 Corinthians 15 about the imperishable, incorruptible, resurrected body because her body was wasting away, her brain was wasting away. Or I would read to her from Revelation 21 and 22 about the new heavens and the new earth where there is no curse, no tears, and uh, no death, and we will be with the Lord and all the redeemed people. And it wasn't just a happy thought to get through the day. It was something we knew to be true that encouraged us. Thank <laughs> you.